Uh, greetings, YouTubers. Um, this video is going to be about the Linux Mint 16 Cinnamon running on a older, slower uh, PC. I've often seen questions on uh, different forums on Google Plus where individuals will ask what is the best distribution to use on an older slower machine and the other day I saw one from an individual who had a machine similar to mine by Dell his setup was a dual core he didn't mention the gigahertz uh, he had three gigs of RAM and he wondered what was the best distribution and everyone everyone that I saw posted recommended a lightweight this top like uh, XFCE or LXDE or they recommended using Debian Arch or um, Crunch Bang Arch Drive uh, distros um, and um, while all these are good distros what I find is that they take a lot of time to set up you kind of limit it in your usability once you install the system uh, Linux Mint on the other hand takes care of a lot of the details you don't have to worry about uh, installing codecs you know once you get it installed you load the programs you normally use and you're up and running so I recommend it to use Linux Mint uh, 6 the 32-bit edition the 32-bit edition uh, does not require as much memory out of the box as a 64-bit and I've noticed from using 64-bit bits uh, Kubuntu and Ubuntu that uh, it, there's some memory leaks. You know, memory usage is pretty steep on my system. And it's pretty much unusable. But 32-bit Linux Mint works just fine. And I'm going to try to demonstrate this here by running a typical setup that I use daily. So I'm launching Chrome. And this has some tabs that I already had open in a session. So this is going to take a while to load. Let's see. And I'm going to do some things on the uh, web server. Now if you notice with the system monitor it started out with around 345 megabytes zero swap as I'm loading Chrome you see the memory usage is just flying I already have XAMP running which I use to set up a web server for testing our web applications and websites uh, that adds about 100 megs to the memory uh, but now I'm going to set up my uh, web develop web app development application Marketa so let's see if I remember how to get to it okay all right tabs are still loading here let's go back to the system monitor still no swap yet uh, CPUs while they're loading these tabs CPU 1 at 40 percent CPU 2 at 36 percent let's see LibreOffice Writer. These things that I normally use. Uh, I, I'm usually sometimes I write uh, articles, so I'll have uh, LibreOffice open. Let's see. I may have a, a text editor open. G edit. Let's load something quick. 
um, I use Bluefish as a HTML editor. Let's minimize this. Let's load a file here. And here are all the tabs I have here, my Gmail, Google Plus. Let's see if I can find that article. Uh, different website. Here's a Vimeo with a video running. Um, Tumblr. Here's a website that I was working on. Uh, I've been playing around with App Inventor. This launches Java, so it adds a little bit to the load that I got. Let's see, I already got McKenna running over here, so I don't need that. And here's Facebook. Look at that. Look at the dancing baby. Let's check the memory uses so far. Okay, I'm, I'm up to 1.2 gigabytes. Zero swap so far. <laughs> and again, my system is a, a dual core 2. Uh, 2.13 gigahertz. 3 gigabytes of RAM. My Intel integrated graphics controller. Let's see, what else do I normally use? FileZilla to upload files. Oh, I'm also running to record my desktop for the video. Okay. Um, let's see what the usage is so far. 1.3 gigs and zero swap yet. Look at the CPU usage. Uh, CPU 1, 30% roughly, 2, 18%. And let's put a little bit more stress on it. I'm going to load VirtualBox. This should put me over the edge. Here. I'm going to run a Windows 7 virtual machine. I believe I set this for one gig. So let's look at as this uses the CPU usage. The CPU uh, cycles go up for each processor. And of course the memory going up. And now I'm starting to see some swappage. Uh, so far 2.1 gigabyte just to get uh, Windows 7 up and running in addition to uh, all the other programs I'm running. My swap is at 3.93 uh, now. Now swap is not a good thing, you know, but if you have to have all these things open, it's a good thing to have it, but you don't want any swap, to tell the truth. Um, I can add more memory if I want to, but, you know, normally I don't have this many applications and browser tabs open at one time. Okay. Now virtual machine is running relatively slow because this is taxing the system. So here we go. We got Windows 7. I haven't opened this before, so this this may embarrass me when I open words. A 
believe my license is still good, bro. Okay, my CPU usage is up at a uh, 100% on um, one CPU, 63% on the other. But look at all the stuff that I'm doing. Okay. So is Linux Mint the ideal operating system for a uh, older, slower PC? Maybe not, but for me, it works just fine. It's solid. As you can see, there's no crashing. Um, some of the user interface is not visible because I'm using record my desktop. But as you can see, I'm able to get a lot of things done simultaneously here, putting the stress on it. So I would recommend Linux Mint 16, 32-bit uh, to anybody with an older, slower uh, computer. Now I would not go below a dual core. I would not use a single core. Um, Pentium. I would certainly not use a Pentium 3. I would not recommend less than 3 gigs of RAM. I do run this on my uh, laptop that has 2 gigs of RAM. It runs good, but then I don't do as, I don't do the same chores on my laptop as I do on this. I also use Linux Mint 16 on a netbook with 1 gig of RAM, and works perfectly fine there as well. But I don't do the same type of tasks on the netbook as I do on my desktop. So I do recommend Linux Mint 16 32 bit with cinnamon for older, slower computers. Stay tuned.